talk here to you about the do's and don'ts of public funds, uh, public funding. But before I start, I would just like to ask the audience, who of you has ever written an, an application for public funding? Okay, and who has received money? Okay, not too bad. So uh, hopefully all of you are able to do it even better afterwards and get more and more public funding. So my name is André Bernhard, André Bernard. I'm running two companies. One of them is Indie Advisor, which I started out as a freelancer seven years ago, uh, ago and which is also now a full-fledged GmbH. It's called Indie Advisor and Company and also target games like roughly four years. Uh, with Target Games, I received public funding from uh, the Medienstiftung NRW and also the Medien Board for uh, Luther Die Reise, a mobile game. And because I love public funding so much, I even made a video together with Professor Dr. Malte Bermann together in my spare time to talk about the new de minimis um, public funding or the Bundesförderung. So, do's and don'ts. First one, people. Do talk to people. I mean, you made a good move already by um, coming to this place where there are a lot of people are around. So people are helpful and um, it's especially important to talk to the people who run the show. And I mean, most of them are all here. You can talk to the EBB, you can talk to the medium board, you can talk even to the guy from the BMVE. Um, it's important to have a personal connection uh, to them and to understand better how everything works out. And if you have questions and things, it's easier just to talk to them. Also, it's important to meet with other people who applied prior to, um, to the program that you are looking into it, so you can ask, uh, ask for best practices and questions over there. <clears throat> so, know the people, um, visit funding days, like I'm preaching to the choir now, as you're all here already, and also visit all the great opportunities that Berlin has to offer, like all the networking reception from Gamesnet and Medianet, and so on. There are a lot of opportunities, you just have to look out for them and um, use it. Um, also, it's important uh, to understand what they want. Um, sometimes it's not about what you want from them, but it's also about what they want from you. So therefore, it's, uh, it's very important to understand what are all these um, programs are aimed at, what they are looking for to achieve, and how, they can, uh, how your game or project uh, can uh, support them in reaching their goals and targets. And last but not least, yeah, talk to them, which means not writing emails all the time, but sometimes it's just easier to pick up the phone and call the people and ask them what your problem is. Because emails are patient sometimes, and I guess all of us, we are getting a lot of emails, but if you need fast and quick feedback, uh, it's very helpful to just uh, talk to people on the phone. So, talk to people. Next one, documents. Um, do perfect documents. Um, what does that mean? First one, you need to check out the requirements and carefully understand what they are looking for. Sometimes they are just requirements regarding, okay, how it needs to look like, like the, I don't know, 15-page Gliederung that you need for the Bundesförderung, for example. Sometimes there are even just small formal requirements, like how the pages have to be separated between the chapters, does it need to be uh, locked or not, or whether you should put it into a folder or not. These are all slight but very important things because you want to deliver um, mostly perfect documents and make it easy for people um, to recognize your documents as documents that stand out next to the crowd. Um, when you're writing these documents, do not expect people to know you. Um, most of the time, if you didn't talk to them yet, they don't. Um, so always keep in mind that it's better to write about yourself from the perspective as someone is not knowing you and explaining all the details and all uh, the interesting things about you and your company. Um, that's also very important. You have to save time for the application process. If you do it for the first time, uh, it's always not a bit, but very complicated. If you do it more often, it takes less time. But don't expect to be finished before the deadline. Usually, you won't be. Uh, there's always some last minute issues, some things that need to be tweaked or um, uh, changed. Um, and therefore, you need to save time. Also, when it comes to uh, small and little things like you need to change one of the important documents that has a signature on it. Your CEO needs to write the signature down on it. He's not available short to the deadline. You're going to get into panic. It's not going to work out. So therefore, make sure that all the important persons are available um, regarding to the deadline when you have to submit all the documents. And um, do not make anything up. 
people usually check what you're writing in there and if you're making up things um, they're going to discover sooner or later which is definitely a criteria for you to get out of the process. Um, also be very specific. Uh, try to name down costs, names, times, etc. Coming to that point later again that you want to deliver some kind of social proof why people can trust you that they should put money into your project. Math. That's also something that you should do and therefore it's very helpful um, to make sure that you have a 4i principle on all your Excel sheets and documents. If you made up fantastic formulas and everything, have someone else check them. Make sure that you don't step find or that you don't leave the application process because of formal issues. Um, as we heard before, the BMVE is quite generous. They come back to you and tell you, okay, it didn't work out, please change this and that. But you can't expect uh, people who have the money to be that patient. For example, if you apply for a creative... Has anyone applied for a creative Europe here already? Did you get the money? <laughs> but it was close. Yeah, yeah. It's always that Four close. Points. It is, Four points. Yeah, but these are the points that... Um, it's always quite close, so that is like the Champion League, uh, Champions League of funding that you can apply for, because it's always like one or two points or half a point that you're missing. But if there are formal issues, for example, within their documents, they're not coming back to you and tell you, no, it didn't work out because you missed this one formula, you're simply going to fly out of the process. So make sure that all of your documents, and especially your Excel sheets, are checked by four people, or four eyes at least. Do your research. Um, if you're bringing up competitors numbers and stuff like that, make sure that you, um, uh, that you have validate numbers. Because in the end, as I mentioned that before, what you want to deliver is social proof. You want somehow um, to make the people who want to give you the money really believe in what you are presenting them. And that's a good thing to have, as I said, competitors numbers, uh, valid competitor numbers, uh, accurate costs on your own project, and therefore, uh, you should check sources um, and also name these sources to make valid that they are, um, um, that they are all uh, valid sources and that your numbers are also valid. Um, also check out what are the eligible costs. I mean, Jenny mentioned it before, what is eligible, what is not eligible, but it's important for you to check this out in the beginning that you don't want to get things for, or money for things that you're not allowed to uh, uh, recoup in the end or that you're not allowed to uh, spend the money that you're receiving on. Um, math. Also check, um, do checks. This is the uh, further Bible of the EBB. Um, these are all pages of them, 152 pages. Um, you can download them here, uh, or no, you can't see it, but if you enter further Beeble into Google and EVB, you will definitely get the right link. And the information on all the programs that are available from the EVB, where you could get money from as a company. And there are crazy things that even get funded, like if you have a band and you want to make a short trip into Europe abroad and play with your band over there, they're even covering money, uh, some money for trips over, over to, to this place. Um, there are a lot of opportunities, but you need to check which are the programs that could be a fit for you. So first of all, not only read the further people, but make a check uh, which programs are available out there. Um, then think about is it a fit for what I'm looking for? <coughs> Most of the times, uh, a lot of the uh, people who have the money are offering some kind of assessment criteria where you can check whether you have the right, um, whether your project is a perfect fit for what they are looking for. We had the question before, I mean, that's the good thing that I've seen all the presentations now before. We had the question before whether which kind of game uh, or which kind of genre is valid for, for getting money. And again, mm, Creative Europe is very specific on what they are giving money on. So you need to have a very, um, it, it needs to be a very specific genre, needs to be narrative and so on. There are a lot of criteria. Don't waste your time and the uh, time of other people if you not, don't know the assessment criteria for the program that you're applying on. Also check whether you need a partner. Sometimes, if you're not talking about Creative Europe, but Horizon 2020 or things like that, they are asking ex ex uh, explicitly for a consortium, so for um, uh, corporations of larger companies and university and whatever. Um, so think about when it's something like a very innovative uh, project that you need to be delivered, that you can deliver on this innovativeness somehow. And therefore you might need a university or something like that. So check that if you need a partner and get them on board quite early. Um, 
For our principle again, let other people read the documents. Uh, don't rely on your own, on the, on the grammar check of word and on your own abilities uh, to talk uh, German. Make sure that other people read this as well, so your documents stand out. Deadline. We also had this question before. Deadlines are very important, so check out the deadline and also check out how you have to deliver the application to the, um, to the Fördergeber. Sometimes it needs to be digitally done, sometimes it needs to be in paper form. Mm. Therefore, you need to know uh, how it has to be done and how you can bring it over there. Because sometimes if you have to do last minute fixes, it's quite a challenge to get the paper application over to, some, um, to the Fördergeber. And um, last but not least, get a confirmation of the delivery, like send the uh, email and BCC to yourself or get a stamp at the gatekeeper if you have to present the stuff. Mm. Just need some water while you look at this joke, this is barely, which is barely visible. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Expectations. Um, do not expect to, be su uh, to succeed in the beginning. Usually you start, you fail, you keep trying, you get better, and then you succeed. But there's no guarantee. Sometimes you get better and still fail. <laughs> That's how life is. And I mean, there are a lot of companies, if you ask people who applied for Creative Europe as well, uh, who tried it for five times, six times, seven times until they got the money. So um, be persistent on that and lower your expectations on being successful. It's a good thing when you try it, and therefore it can, could work out in the end sooner or later. <coughs> And last but not least, uh, say thanks. Thanks to the people um, that you apply to, even if you got the money or didn't get the money. And also, uh, thanks to you for staying with me. That's it in a nutshell. <laughs> That's my email if you have some more questions or follow me on Twitter. And um, yeah, are there any questions? Yes. Um, when it comes to uh, competition analysis and game sales, there is not a public database on how, how many games sell how well. So how do you determine that in that industry? There used to be opportunities like Steam Spy, yeah. but sadly Steam Spy, for all people who know that, it's out of business now. It's difficult, so you have to spend more time on research. Um, there's still like relative numbers that you can get by checking tools like AppAnny. Um, I mean, you can also spend a lot of money on AppAnny, so you get definite or more accurate numbers. But um, try to, to Google for numbers that are available, like on, on um, uh, other people's uh, teams that have provided and games and ask them for numbers. Usually the indie community is quite nice and they share numbers quite often, but at least you have to ask them because otherwise all the big uh, first parties are black boxes nowadays. Uh, nowadays it's very difficult to get some first-hand figures. Yeah. yeah. Same question about like a niche or a concept which is still not out there. So I mean, if I develop, I'm developing something which I consider pretty new, I don't find something I can compare it with, um, because I'm exploring, for example, a niche which is, I suppose, will grow, but I don't know. I, I yeah. can, how can I, how can I present my, also, you know, my projections, financial projections, marketing, and so on? If there are not, uh, if there are no numbers that are valid that could apply to your project, maybe try to think of setting up some own numbers by, uh, I don't know, visit a lot of conference, ask people to enter a survey, collect email addresses. I mean, people want to be convinced somehow. And then it's about if you can't find numbers that, uh, if there are no numbers out there that prove what you want to say, you have to make up your own numbers and think about, okay, what, I can, what can I do to convince those people? And maybe say, okay, we've been to a lot of conferences and in the end we had 500 people signing up on our email address. Or we have, I don't know, impressive numbers on Twitter or Facebook or something. Try to generate some own numbers then and, and work on that to give people something that impresses them regarding that there is some audience out there already that is looking, looking for your kind of content. At least that's my approach. <laughs> some more questions? Cool. Then thanks a lot for your time. Thank you very much.